Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this lecture, I will review the various early diapsid reptiles from the Pennsylvanian and Permian periods. Now, the diapsid condition is where the skull exhibits two temporal fenestra, or openings, in the side of the skull. The diapsid condition is found in lizards, snakes, crocodilians, and birds, as well as in extinct dinosaurs. Thus, the early reptiles that I will discuss today were the ones that were ancestors to a major clade or branch of reptiles that includes dinosaurs and birds. The oldest true diapsid is the fossil Petrolacosaurus from the Pennsylvanian period of Kansas. The skull features two openings, one between the parietal, squamosal, and postorbital, and the other between the squamosal, postorbital, and jugal. The roof of the mouth also features an additional opening, the suborbital fenestra, that characterize the era scalidia, or early diapsid group, that also includes several other Pennsylvanian reptiles. Another well-known Permian diapsid reptile is Yungenia from the Permian of South Africa. It's well known from some remarkably complete skeletons found in ancient burrows. Yungenia closely resembles modern lizards and features a very open skull with two large temporal fenestra or openings for jaw muscles. Yungenia is often used as a basal outgroup uh, in studies that look at the diapsid reptile relationships, in part because it is represented by good material of its skeleton. One of the most bizarre early diapsids from the Permian period is the small gliding fossil Suliosaurus, known from North America and Europe. This little diapsid reptile features elongated ribs that acted like airfoils for gliding between trees. Soluriosaurus is the first vertebrate that took to the air. While it did not have powered flight, it showcases how diverse Permian reptiles had become. They were able to clamber up trees and glide very early in this group of primitive diapsids. The skulls of Suriosaurus and the closely related Wampasaurus show that it had a broad shield with bony scutes extending from the supertemporal and squamosal bones. Gliding by use of expanded ribs is found in living diapsid reptiles such as Draco, a small gliding squamate lizard found in Southeast Asia today, which is unrelated to the early diapsid Soliosaurus from the Permian, but shows what advantage a gliding locomotive lifestyle would offer these small early diapsid reptiles. Now the diapsids would split into various groups during the Permian with the first uh, Archaeosauromorpha, Protorosaurus, appearing during the late Permian in Germany, which would be the lineage uh, leading onward to crocodilians, dinosaurs, and birds. In the next lecture, we will look at the synapsid group of reptiles, the group of Permian reptiles that would go on to evolve into mammals. All right, be sure to summarize the diversity of early diapsids during the Pennsylvanian and Permian periods. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website, benjamin slash Links are found in the description below.